Dragon Ball community. Sorry, not sorry, but this is how Goku's gonna look fucking around with Gojo. I just wanna say, I love you, man. You're a great content creator. Me and you both defend Bleach with our lives. You're a really cool dude, so this is no hate to you. I know that, I hope that we're not making these videos out of, you know, frustration towards each other. More like, hey man, I disagree. Let me hear your point, because that's kind of how I'm making it. But get into your points because I have them all written down. You mentioned how Goku's techniques wouldn't even activate within a domain because domains quite literally bypass technique. But that means that we're also going to keep the weaknesses of these domains within the fight. I don't think we're going to just take away the weaknesses of abilities to make sure that the character wins and has a way for the ability to work. Because domains only work on people who have cursed energy and Goku does not have cursed energy. So if we're going to give him Cursed Energy, we're also going to give him the, since we're giving him the power system of Cursed Energy, we're also giving him the knowledge of Cursed Energy and the uh, knowledge of Domain Expansions and the knowledge of Go uh, Gojo and how his abilities work. Because everybody in JJK knows Gojo, knows his techniques, knows how they work. So if we're giving Goku Cursed Energy and that power system, he's going to know everything about the verse. He's going to know about Gojo and his techniques. Also, since we are completely taking away the weaknesses of the Domain, which already makes the fight entirely null and void. We're never taking away weaknesses with an ability. So Gojo lose on that principle alone. But going on to the next one. Off guard feet, off guard Goku can die by hollow purple. And off guard Goku at bare minimum survived a five dimensional Hakai. Off guard Goku in base survived a fifth dimensional attack. But somehow he's going to die from a finite three-dimensional hollow purple. And I know you mentioned this, and I'm gonna go over some of these really quick. Hollow purple disintegrates, maximum output of red, which just so you know, maximum output of red is weaker than a 200% hollow purple, so it's not doing anything to go Goku. But again, you mentioned the disintegration part. He disintegrated him, and this disintegrated him. Showing that yes, characters in Dragon Ball, key quite literally disintegrates you. So they survive disintegration attacks on a daily. Now you ask how fast is Granola, since I said he was two times faster than the speed, you said show me, show me it. Not only is it stated verbatim that he moves faster than imminent speed, and you said, whoa, well, how fast? Even if we lowball it to one point quintillion zeros, one, faster than infinite speed, Goku and Super Saiyan God, which is Super Saiyan Red, moved fast as this guy, and actually moved faster to be able to dodge the attack. So again, at bare minimum, that's probably one point quintillion zeros, two, faster than the speed, or faster than infinite speed. And that's not including Super Saiyan Blue or MUI, which quite literally would be four times faster than the speed of what? Infinite. It would be four times faster than infinite speed. Also, you mentioned that infinite, they did not go infinite speed based off of this definition, but they quite literally did. They went a finite distance in zero time, which is why he stated you moved at infinite speed instantaneous movement and move faster than that. Just so people can have a visual understanding, if I went from here to here in zero time past, that is infinite speed. Infinite speed is not going from here to the ends of the universe in zero time. Even though that's still infinite speed, going from here to here in zero time, by definition, finite distance in zero time is infinite speed which Granola has verbatim. He has a feat and a statement backing it up because he moved and then was stated to move at infinite speed. So that's not something anybody can argue against. But you said he needs a measurable speed to even bypass an infinite distance, which isn't true by definition of being faster than the division rate. If going from here to here and the division rate is one, right? So if I have to take one step to get here, then obviously it's going to take one step. But now if it takes two steps to get over there, and I try taking one big step and it doesn't work because I have to take two steps, right? Now, let's say that it takes two steps to get here, but each one of my steps is four steps, right? I'll be two steps past the destination because I am, because my movement is way greater than the distance, than the division rate between me and that point. So instead of it taking me two steps to get there, because each step of mine counts as four, I am now two steps past the division rate. So if Gojo's distance from here to here is infinity, then being two times faster than infinity, I will be one step 
ahead of that division rate. If I'm four times faster, I will be four steps ahead of the distance between that division rate because the division rate is infinite and I am four times faster or I have four steps more per step than that division rate of one step. So which is greater, the one step of infinity or the four step of infinity? It'll always be the four step of infinity. So no, you do not need immeasurable speed. Also, Goku quite literally went into the future, which is by definition moving beyond linear time. So Goku has immeasurable speed, literally stated verbatim. So even if you say he doesn't have infinite speed, even though it's stated verbatim and there's feats for it, he has another statement and a feat of him pushing into the future to fight his. And then there's a statement for it that says what he did. So by definition, with a statement plus feet, he has a measurable speed. Also, you mentioned this in the back that just because Super Boot did it and Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks also performed the same feat, why does Goku automatically be able to do it just because he's stronger? Because it's stated verbatim within the show that you cannot perform a feat unless you have the power level to do so. For example, Raditz and everybody before him were unable to destroy a planet. Nappa, who has a power level of 9,000, is unable to destroy a planet. Only Vegeta has been seen destroying a planet because he has enough power level to do so. So, a, so feats proving that none of these characters before power level of 10,000 are able to destroy a planet, but now a character past the level of 10,000 is proven to destroy a planet, the statement is now true. That is the basis of power level and scaling within Dragon Ball, that you cannot perform a feat unless you have the same power level or the power level necessary to perform the same feat. Or you exceed that power level and you will still be able to perform that same feat. Unless you're trying to say power level five Goku is able to destroy the macrocosm because it doesn't matter how strong you are, how fast you are, or what your power level is, you're able to perform the same feat as another character. That would be extremely disingenuous and we can literally just make Kid Goku boundless by that definition because I don't need any proof. Otherwise, there's I don't need to use the statements that are made within the series saying that you have to have a certain battle power or shown to have the same battle power or exceed that battle power to perform the same feats. I can just say Kid Goku is boundless at that point. Even though, again, this is Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, but Super Saiyan 2 Gotenks and Piccolo were unable to with their battle power. Gotenks had to literally go and become four times stronger to perform the same feat as Boo, proving you have to have the same battle power to perform the same feat as another character. So yes, Goku being a, on a higher power level than all of them combined, he can perform the same feat. Now, if you're asking, well, he's never seen the feat. Well, yes, he has, because he knows that, that Super Boo got out of the hyperbolic time chamber. He was worried about the Earth being destroyed because when Super Boo got out, then Super Boo ate the rest of his family and friends. So yes, he knows how we got out. He sees how we got out and he sees when these two get out. So yes, he knows how to get through dimensions by doing it like this. But now to go over this, Gojo's infinity is not even an infinite distance as Achilles and the tortoise is an infinite distance that's brought into reality. However, Gojo's technique is fantasy. It quite literally contradicts the infinity part, meaning Gojo's infinity is not an infinite distance. It is quite literally just his technique name which quite literally, it's just the name of his technique, the infinity technique. That is just it. It is a name fallacy and people have just ran with that to say, yes, oh, it's an infinite distance. When it's just a finite distance and he keeps on adding. My bad, dividing, but at a finite rate. But there's all the feats plus statements to back them up. Immeasurable speed backed up with a statement, with a feat as well. Infinite speed backed up not only with when they moved and then stated to actually move at that speed, that is a feat plus statement. That's not something anybody can argue with. And then Goku's four times faster than that speed, meaning that he's also four times faster than the division rate that Gojo has, even if it was an infinite distance. And even if it takes a measurable speed, as I literally just proved, a statement backed up by a feat, which cannot be disproven. And again, Goku's key is able to travel an infinite distance on top of an infinite distance. So his key alone is able to bypass infinity because it's able to travel an infinite distance. So in no way, shape or form can Goku lose against Gojo.